the sounds of bats and insects give way to the calls of endemic birds and amphibians who emerge with the day, taking part in the race for survival that makes Thailand's wilderness so colorful and surprising. Small villages dot this countryside, each with its own distinct practices and people, connected by a series of overgrown trails. For the next week, I'll wander through this wild world, discovering the natural treasures that make Thailand so distinct from the countries surrounding it. Follow me on a trek that promises a truly unique experience, blending culture and nature for one wild new adventure. The wild world of Asia beckons. Do you hear its call? I do. Don't look down. Don't look down. This feels like such a big mistake. Here. I'm Ryan Pyle, adventurer. And we've come into a huge snowstorm. Explorer. Amazon is killing me. I've traveled the world for years documenting people and practices in remote regions. It's amazing, we just walked straight into a family celebration. Now, I turn my eyes to Asia, through its barren deserts and dense jungle canopy. Unique forms of life flourish, <laughs> with distinct lessons to be learned from cultures unfamiliar. I can't help but notice we're surrounded by skulls. And a dare to be curious through new friendships to last a lifetime. <laughs> Come with me as I climb higher, seeking new perspectives and understanding of the world around me. When I walk, I'm learning. And when I walk, I'm connecting with the place. Exploring the far reaches of the east. One river, valley, mountaintop at a time. This is Expedition Asia. High above Chiang Mai rests the famous Doi Suthep Temple. This is a Buddhist temple, sacred to many Thai people. According to Thai legend, a white elephant climbed to this mountaintop trumpeted three times and dropped dead. Interpreted as a holy sign, a temple was constructed here and now holds an amazing golden stupa filled with relics and a space for meditation. the temple sides, impressive views of Chiang Mai, Thailand's largest northern city can be seen. This vibrant metropolis is located 700 kilometers north of Bangkok and is surrounded by some of the tallest mountains in the country, making it an ideal jumping off point for adventure seekers like myself. In a dynamic city so full of life, it's hard to take everything in. But one of the best ways to experience Chiang Mai's neighborhoods is to hop on a moped and drive through them all. The streets are busy and narrow, filled with taxi cabs and fast paced traffic, typical of urban Asia. As I whip through the city streets, I notice a prominent theme of religious architecture and statues occupying its space. Buddhism is the dominant religion in Thailand, and Chiang Mai has over 300 Buddhist temples in the city alone. Monks practice Buddhism at these ancient sites, studying and meditating amongst the distinctly realistic wax figures of famous monks from the past. Weaving through Chiang Mai keeps me on my toes. I turn down whatever avenues catch my eye. Allow
allowing myself to wander and explore freely. Soon the alleys become too narrow for even a moped, so I ditch the wheels and begin a long walk through the city before seeking out the sounds of impacts echoing out of the gym nearby. <laughs> Muay Thai kickboxing is likely Thailand's most popular athletic export. A ferocious mix of punches, dodges and kicks, this martial art utilizes the entire body for everything from workouts to televised kickboxing matches. Many young men and women, such as this athlete, train through their youth for a chance at glory in the many prestigious arenas throughout Thailand and abroad. Chiang Mai has so much to offer a traveler like myself. I could stay for weeks on end, but my time in the city is running out. And so I wrap up my tour of downtown with a visit to the Ta Pei Gate, an ancient wall that once protected the old city. Today, it's the site of many city events and festivals. We're here in Chiang Mai, the adventure capital of Thailand. And we've had a great couple of days exploring the city center. I was riding a scooter around for a little while. But of course, we've come here for something more. And tomorrow morning, we're going to be heading out into the mountains and doing a village to village trek to explore the very best that this country has to offer. And it all starts right now. My trek through northern Thailand will be made up of a series of trails through jungle and farmland, with unique mountain villages utilized as pit stops along the way. Many of the paths I take haven't been used in years, and the jungle has reclaimed them. So I'm prepared to bushwhack through the thick overgrowth in order to find my way. My reward for this struggle will be a vast array of wildlife, culture, and cuisine, which can only be found here in the northern reaches of Thailand. Out in the farmlands of northern Thailand is where my long journey will begin. This is the home of the Karen tribe's people. Beautiful arrays of stepped earth line the hillsides, creating flat beds of land to grow crops, like rice, within them. Farmers live amongst this land, so they may tend to it each day, living in humble housing built from bamboo. Life is peaceful here. The instrument this villager is playing is called a Karen harp. The song he sings, one steeped in tradition. His sounds echo through the worked land around him. Guava fruit sways in the breeze. Tea leaves are dried and sorted in the sun. Peppers, herbs, and corn lay out fresh from the fields. But agriculture isn't all this village has to offer. Textile crafts such as weaving and sewing is present among its people, adorning the village elders in a distinctly Thai fashion. I enter this environment filled with wonder and respect. Weaving through the rice fields is magical. There are limitless ways to move between these plots of crops. I enjoy the freedom of movement within this farmland, thinking about the many roads we'll take through the jungles ahead. I'm ready to get out and into the real nature of Northern Thailand. All that's left to do is meet my guide for this expedition, Chani. Chani. Hello. My name is Ryan, nice to meet you. Welcome to Thailand. Thank you. Are you going to be yeah. my guide for this adventure? Yeah, have it's you been here before? My first time. So we're going to do a village to village trek? Yes. Through the mountains? Sure. Through the jungle? Sure. And you're going to lead me? Yeah. Ready to get lost? Let's do it. I'll follow you. Yeah. <laughs> and so, just as quickly as we've entered this village, we're off and on our way to the next. I balance along the little ridges separating beds of crops, 
following Chani's path towards the far edge of the rice fields. While it all blends together in my eyes, she knows exactly how to connect the farmland with the forests surrounding them. Small bridges and walkways take us between houses and over streams until finally the village is well behind us with a dense canopy of trees ahead. The trails I'm entering for my journey were connected by a trekker named Sebastian, the first to map out the adjoining trails of Northern Thailand. He shared a bit of his experiences with me to better understand the ground I'm walking on. So we go to Hmong, uh, Hmong tribes, villages. We go to Karen tribes, villages, Lisu tribes, Lao tribes. Uh, that, that's the main, uh, that's the main tribes of, of Thailand. So they are very different. For instance, the Karen tribes, they stay lower in the, in the mountains. As the, whereas the Hmong tribes, for instance, they, they used to grow a long time ago, they used to grow opium, so they stayed higher in the mountains. Okay. Yeah, so they are very different in terms of uh, what they do for, for living, uh, their character as well, uh, the kind of villages, the uh, relationships they have with, uh, with the nature. Yes, they are very, very different. But for me, that's really interesting to work with. It's, it's tough. You do uh, tough trekking trips or uh, trail running trips. But when you reach the village, uh, at least you can take a shower. Of course, not a hot shower, but you can take a shower and you can sleep. Let's say it's simple, but it's, uh, it's comfortable. And also you can, uh, you can enjoy the nice Thai food. Chani and I follow some of the very trails Sebastian helped map out on this initial day of trekking. The first thing I notice entering the wilderness is how overgrown the path is. I don't even know that I can confidently call it a path. It feels more like bushwhacking than following any set route. We're pushing through the brush, vines, and waterfalls right away. Uh, we're out here and we're trekking through the foothills really of northern Thailand and it's a lot up and down it's a lot of hills and at the moment it's a lot of heat the humidity is up the temperature's up and I'm melting but uh, hopefully over the next couple days I'll get a little bit more used to the weather and we'll be able to move a little quicker but I'm loving it so far and we're super lucky because we're protected from the canopy from the real heat of the Sun so Anyways, these days are never ending. I gotta keep moving. Up one, just to come back down the other side, greeted by a clearing in the trees where another village of the Karen tribe lives and a warm red sunset. After a day of trekking in Northern Thailand, I can start to see how our days will go. Into the jungle, through a village, and then back into the wilds. This routine promises a dynamic set of experiences along the way, with new families to greet our team each night. You know, going through the jungle, um, it's not an easy journey. I mean, the trail is there, I think, most of the time, but it's tough and it's not very well established, or if it was a long time ago, it no longer is. And the flora and fauna has just kind of grown back and taken over the trail. And we've got to do some cutting to get through. And sometimes we lose the trail and we have to pick it up again. And, uh, and it's a real challenge, but it's fun. And it's pretty well inhabited. So you end up in the jungle for you know, a couple hours, and then you come out and then you're in a rice field. Uh, maybe there's a village nearby. And then you, know, you go back into the jungle and you come out in another rice field or you come out in another village and you go back in the jungle. So it's, you're never really too far um, away from civilization or away from a village or or uh, a place to grab a meal or something like that but it's been it's been interesting you know i mean i already feel well worn by the jungle um but we're still just in our infancy of this adventure uh, and we do have so much more to see and do and and i can't wait because because the jungle is tough um 
But if you're looking for adventure, there's really no better place to be. As the day turns to night after our first big stretch on the trail, the fogs roll in over these peaks around us. I fall asleep listening as the jungle's nighttime creatures come alive. new weather systems from the west. Overcast skies turn to storm clouds as rain is dumped on the forests around us for most of the morning. An eerie twilight settles in as we start our travels. And then, our first major obstacle of the expedition. Anytime you're trekking, anytime you put yourself out into Mother Nature, you just cannot control the weather. And from where we finished our trek yesterday to where we start our trek today, we actually had to drive about 10 or 15 minutes. And we got totally stuck on the side of this mountain. Uh, we were going kind of, you know, past these small villages on a little dirt road. And because it was raining so much uh, last night and this morning, the car stuck. So we have to work hard and I think we're gonna end up having to pull the car up the hill. But we went to the village and got some extra people and uh, let's see how this all unfolds. It looks like, uh, it looks like somehow we did it. We only needed about five Thai villagers and me had a, a little bit in and out and Sebastian. Uh, but somehow we got our vehicle pulled up the mountain. It's a hell of a way to start the morning. The rain clears and I'm right back on the trail. Your instincts tell you to take a break after a challenge like getting stuck in the mud, but I know we haven't budgeted the time to waste on an incident like this. So I'm back on the move and fast to make up for lost time. The trail doesn't want you to move quickly. It pulls you at every turn. The overgrowth is only getting thicker. It's really tough in here, you know? It's kind of midday. The heat is really on the jungle now. Humidity's coming up. And Chani's just up ahead, and she's cutting her way through the jungle. And she was explaining to me earlier, you know, like, not a lot of local people use these trails anymore. Um, because you know everyone's got scooters and motorcycles and cars. So when they need to go somewhere, they just drive village to village. Uh, and these trails aren't used much. So when we go through, we've got to cut our way through just to keep it, just to keep the trail alive. And just to make sure we can get through okay and, uh, and hopefully leave the trail and leave it for the people behind us who are probably gonna be tourists and not local people. There is something very special about taking these unused trails, and every now and then it rewards you with sights that you could never find on a moped or scooter, like the Mokfa waterfalls. A 
testament to the power of the nature around us. These waterfalls are gushing with an intense force. The same rain that trapped our car in the mud earlier has fed this epic sight before us, drowning out the sounds of everything around it. Trekking with Chani is turning out to be a really nice way to see northern Thailand. Her relaxed demeanor and thorough knowledge of this landscape is indispensable, leading me through jungle terrain and beside rivers all day long. It's not often that I get the company of a female trekking guide on expeditions like this. The field is dominated by men, and I'm appreciating Chani's perspective. Today we leave the villages belonging to the Karen tribe and enter the territory of the Hmong people, crossing the water over a rickety old bridge. Across the way is a small hut selling local goods run by a cheery woman in the forest. A jungle convenience store of sorts, perfect for a short rest in our long day. What are, what's all these things? It's, it's worm. Yeah? Where are they from? Are they pick them out of the ground? From bamboo. Bamboo. Yes. A local treat found in the bamboo stalks of Thailand's wilderness, these bamboo worms are easy to come by. Tasty and an excellent source of protein for trekkers traveling light like ourselves. And what, do they just sell them in a bag? Yes, and they cook it. And they cook it? Mm -hmm. Really? Do you know how to cook it? Yes. Do you, you like, like them? Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. What do you think, should we get a bag? Yeah. Save it for later? Mm -hmm. We can have it tonight. Yes. Tonight we stay with the Hmong tribe, living in a village high up on the ridge line. The views from this village are amazing, stretching in every direction for miles and miles. The people here are different than those of the Karen tribe, with their own lives and special skills. I can feel our movement through this world simply by looking at the faces around me, different every day. Livestock and colorful garments line the streets, and the children greet us with curiosity and open arms. And in town is a local guitar player whose sounds echo through the village as we wind down for the evening. We've stopped for dinner at a Hmong family's home within the village. 
This is a frequent stop for Chani on her expeditions through northern Thailand. The family kindly cooks us dinner, as well as the bamboo worms we bought earlier in the day. Cold beer at the end of a long day of trekking is beautiful, right? Yes. Yellow curry. Yellow curry. With chicken. And potato. Yeah. This is what we bought today. Yes. Our bamboo worms. Yes. Should we try one? Yes. So good. Yeah. So, so good. Have you so, tried it before? I've had these before. Mm -hmm. I love them. Mm. Uh, you know what I love about these village treks mm -hmm. is having the chance to eat in the villages. Ah. Because I feel like the food is so much healthier mm -hmm. and so much more fresh mm -hmm. in the countryside, in the villages where everything's local yeah. instead of in the city where everything it comes from a grocery yeah. store and it's probably packaged and pre-frozen mm -hmm. and whatever. Yeah. This, uh, this food is so good. We're pushing further into the wilds of Thailand. The peaks around us are getting bigger, silhouetted by the sunrise each day. Morning is quiet in sleepy villages like this one, but I wake up to the sounds of Chani playing with some local children. It's comforting trekking with Chani. Her ability to connect with the villagers throughout this region is inspiring. It's hard to remove yourself from the comforts of village life on mornings like this. I feel like we could stay here forever. But Chani has promised that we have an exciting day ahead. So we tear ourselves out of bed, hitting the trail with an eager pace. Every day the trail is fighting me. Thick branches, bamboo, roots, and rocks attack your feet. I can rarely see more than 20 feet ahead of myself, letting the approaching landscape surprise me constantly. Our first surprise of the day, elephants bathing in a river our path crosses. These elephants have been out in the hot sun all day. They were brought here to this river by their caretakers to cool off. This water, with a current too strong for humans, is merely just a swimming hole for these giant creatures. So Chandy and I were walking across the bridge and we saw three elephants just hanging out in the water. Um, so we wanted to come down and have a closer look. Now they're not wild elephants. <laughs> it's distracting, he's right here. They're not wild elephants. There's an elephant sanctuary just across the street. Uh, but, and that's where tourists can go to like learn about the elephants, learn about their habitat and actually pet them and stuff like that. But after that, once the tourists are gone, the handlers, they bring the elephants down to the river so they can bathe and cool off because it's really hot here in Thailand. And this is where we found them. The Thai elephant is the official animal of Thailand and sacred to Buddhists. An endangered species, there are only 1,000 wild elephants left here. Thai elephants differ from their Indian and African counterparts, being a bit shorter and stockier. But they're still massive animals, with eating taking up about 18 hours each day. This is the closest I've ever been to an elephant. They're massive. Oh, geez. Hello. It's so nice to see them, like, out here resting, yeah. washing, bathing, just hanging out. 
Just being normal elephants. Sixty year old. Sixty. Oh, grandpa. Absolutely magical. Thailand's a magical place. It's time for these elephants to head home and for Chani and I to dive back into the jungle. These days are hot. These days are long. And so I take any chance I can to find rests along the way. As I venture through this district of rivers, Chani and I come across a man on the water's banks. He creates river rafts out of the bamboo surrounding us and offers to shave a few kilometers off our trek by floating us downstream. We gladly accept. All he needs to do now is create the raft. Sit on it or do we stand on it? Okay, so this is the this is the bamboo raft stool. Because if you sit on the bamboo, your weight pushes the bamboo down, but it still floats, but then your pants are gonna get wet. So we have a bamboo stool to make it happen. Chani, we've been trekking in the heat all day. Yeah. It's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take this raft and enjoy a little bit of the river. Yeah. Thank you for organizing that. Did you know this was going to happen before we saw him? No. Did you plan it? No. Are you lying? Maybe. <laughs> she has lots of plans and lots of ideas, and she tells me nothing. So Chani and I float down the river for several hours, exchanging the brutal struggle through the jungle for a peaceful sail downstream. Out here, on the river, our view of Thailand opens up. We pass by several plots of farmland with livestock drinking from the water's edge. Our driver uses a long bamboo pole to steer us through the turns in the river. The raft feels sturdy, smoothly gliding over the stream. leads us to another village where Chani and I say goodbye to our river guide. Tonight we will stay with the Lahu tribe, yet another minority group in this diverse mountain region of northern Thailand. Village locations have shaped our journey through this wilderness so far. These overnight stops form a web of unique culture and people throughout this otherwise treacherous terrain. I want to go to Thailand and I want to, to, to discover something, to make something by myself, uh, to be like a pioneer. And I want to stay in sport. And um, I, I went trekking. But the, I realized there was no marked footpath, uh, the same marked footpath I, I, I used in, uh, in France or that you can find uh, all over Europe or in the US. There was nothing like this. And uh, I told myself, okay, it will be nice if, uh, if I can find a, a route from Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai, which are the two biggest cities in the north of Thailand. In total, I've, uh, I've found like 500 kilometers of, uh, of trails. So sometimes it was difficult, but after months of researches, yeah, I step by step, part by part, at the end, I was able to find uh, the world route. Chani and I carry on through beautiful Thailand. The sun begins to set behind us, revealing brilliant shadows in the fields around this village. 
And as the day ends, a system of clouds snake through the mountain valleys in a beautiful display, creeping towards the final glow of twilight. We're in another village for the night, another 24-hour home, comfortable and exhausted from the trekking and the drinking of the day. People of Thailand have really opened their homes to us. They've been wonderful. We've had incredible meals. We've had this, this richness of life and culture and experience. And, and then still with all that, we've struggled because the jungle here is hard. Um, it's really, really quite challenging. And Chani has been you know, amazing as she guides me through this jungle, but it's pretty ruthless. And there's huge portions of it which are unkept uh, this route, this trail is unkept, uh, overgrown, and we really had to fight through it. And that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy and it slows you down. And it definitely wears on your mind and your body and your soul. And, and it can really make the day a lot longer than it needs to be. But I think that's part of the reward of trekking in places where people don't normally trek and fighting through trying to keep these trails alive um, versus the comfort of the villages has been a real kind of um, dichotomy for me, whether I like it more or like it less. Um, but actually, I don't have to like it more or like it less. It is what it is. And I've come here to put myself through whatever Northern Thailand is at this moment. And we are definitely seeing it and we are definitely feeling it. And uh, to be here next to the fire on the top of a mountain in a small village is, uh, is exactly where I want to be. Day yet. Starting out from the village in the early morning, Chani and I weave through homes as neighbors wake up to begin their day. On the outskirts of town are fields of crops. Corn, rice, and fruit trees catch the light in the early morning as Chani and I work our way around the farmland, walking along the gullies and the dirt roads used by local farmers we wander out of civilization. Today we're taking on the steep summits surrounding Chiang Dao. Promising the best views of the trek, Chani knows the winding way up these bluffs. So I follow her lead into the forests one last time. change in elevation is thinning out the foliage around us, making it easier to spot exotic insects endemic to the region. Can you feel all the little arms? That's creepy. <laughs> this is pretty wild. We just found this little guy on the trail, just hanging out. And, uh, now would be a good time to mention that insects scare me to death, and I don't like them. Um, but this is basically uh, my worst nightmare. I have nightmares about things like this. Oh. Okay. Okay. Jenny, are you gonna hold them again? No. <laughs> Wait a bit. No. No. Get closer. No, 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 no. Get closer to nature. <laughs> you know, I thought Thailand was pretty one-dimensional, and I thought it was just jungles. But we've been trekking most of the morning straight up out of the valley, and uh, look what I found. A little pine. Uh, we're in a pine forest, and we're up at a much higher altitude, and it's dry, and the weather and the temperature is much cooler, and it's really lovely, and uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. And, you know, this is really our pretty much our last day of trekking. Um, and Chani's up ahead and we're gonna be making our way up to this beautiful summit uh, where we should be able to have 360 degree views of all of Northern Thailand. And uh, if it all goes well, that'll kind of mark the end of our journey. And I'm a little sad, but we're in an absolutely stunning part of this country and we've got quite a bit more climbing to do.
Chani and I rise through the tree line, pushing through this brand new environment of pines. It's our last day here, and I'm still being surprised by this wilderness. But the greatest surprise is yet to come. After negotiating some precarious overgrown trail, Chani and I navigate a near vertical stretch of pathway until finally we crest the summit of Pa Sam Liam. We did Yay. it. What's the what's the summit of this mountain called? Pa Sam Liam. Pa Sam Liam. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. We did it. Yes. We made it to the top. Yay. That was a pretty tough climb. Yeah, pretty steep. Pretty steep, especially right at the end. Yeah. Yeah, but the views are incredible. Yeah, look at that. The payoff is real. To be able to sit up here and have these 360 degree views of Northern Thailand is absolutely epic. You know, we've been trekking through the jungle, the forest, we've been stuck under the canopy, we've been cutting our way through the bushes and the shrubs all week long so we could get to here uh, so that Chani and I could stand here at the top and celebrate. And that's exactly what we did. And it's, it's really, really nice. You know, I think a lot of people don't really understand the kinds of adventures you can have here in Northern Thailand. And uh, it's a true privilege to be able to come out here and really explore. So now we've made it to the top of this beautiful mountain and uh, there is some weather coming in it looks like. So we're gonna be heading back down, getting back to safety. But our time in Thailand has been truly magical.